Now, Hillary Clinton and John Kasich are worlds apart when it comes to many issues, right? Now, Kasich is, of course, running for the Republican nomination uh, over on the Republican side, and uh, Hillary Clinton is running for the Democratic nomination. So, different parties, different worldviews. They're actually very separate on a lot of different, if a lot of different issues. Now, uh, one issue, however, that they were both in favor of was the issue of welfare reform. Now, let me give you a little bit of history on welfare reform. Now, uh, during the time uh, Kasich spent as House Budget Committee Chairman in the 1990s, he worked with Bill and Hillary Clinton to try to roll back welfare reform, or I'm sorry, welfare programs. Now, remember, uh, Hillary Clinton at the time was First Lady. Now, she helped push and advocate for her husband's policies. Now, one of those policies was uh, what we call the Welfare Reform Bill, and it ended up doubling extreme poverty in America. So let me give you the history of this. So in 1996, the Clinton administration and congressional Republicans worked together to pass the Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity Reconciliation Act, also known as welfare reform. Now the legislation was touted, and this was a positive, quote, the end of welfare as we know it, right? There were a lot of people, I guess, that were very upset about the way that welfare was run, so let's replace it, let's fix it, let's reform it, right? Now it replaces the aid to families with dependent children uh, with something called the temporary assistance for needy families. Now there are a lot of people that still think that we're running welfare under the old system. We're not. Under the new system, uh, TANF, there was a time limit put in place on how long the federal government would give assistance financially to poor families, right? Now, John Kasich was actually very instrumental in moving that legislation forward. Now, there were some disagreements at first, right, between Clinton and the Republicans on earlier versions of the bill. Now, Kasich had actually introduced and pushed very hard, worked very hard, uh, and introduced what, what went on to be the final legislation in June of 1996. By late July, the administration and the Republicans had actually solved those little disagreements and ended up passing the bill by a vote of 328 to 101. Now, Bernie Sanders, who was a senator at the time as well, voted against that bill, just to let you know. In fact, during an interview in 1994 about the debate leading up to the passage of the bill, Senator Sanders said this, quote, my concern is in the process of welfare reform. We begin to look at the causes of poverty in America, that we make sure that we improve it, the situation, and not punish poor people and children, especially the children. Now, of course, uh, Senator Sanders went on to vote against the bill. Uh, I'm sorry, this was when he was a member of the House of Representatives, so he's actually a representative at this time. Now, he went on to vote against the bill in 1996. Uh, in his book in 1997, called Outsider in the White House, he described the legislation as this. Quote, the bill which c combines an assault on the poor, women and children, minorities and immigrants, is the grand slam of scapegoating legislation and appeals to the frustrations and ignorance of the American people along a wide spectrum of prejudices. Damn. Pretty harsh criticism of this, right? Now, of course, Sanders, uh, as I said, he opposed it. John Kasich championed it, and Bill Clinton signed it. Now, I'll get to Hillary's role in this soon, because it actually turns out to be a big role. Now, uh, but first, we'll continue with John Kasich. Now, he went on to framing this bill as good for civil rights. Yes. Listen to this. Um, this, is, this is a speech that he gave on the floor on July 31st of 1996. He said, quote, We marched 30, 40 years ago because we thought people were not being treated fairly. And we march today for the same reason. Remember, this is on welfare reform. <laughs> what I would say, and maybe let me take it back and say many of my friends marched. I had friends that marched for civil rights. I wasn't there. I was too young. But I watched it. I, I was interested, and I respected it. <laughs> all right. He said, uh, he continues, what I suggest at the end of the day, however, is that we are all going to have to stand up for those who get neglected in reform. But frankly, this system is going to provide far more benefits, far more hope, restore the confidence in the American people that we have a system that will help those who cannot help themselves, and at the same time, 
demand something from able-bodied people who can. This is a welfare reform. This is, remember, this was putting a, lim a time limit on welfare benefits. He said, quote, it will benefit their children. It will help the children of those who go to work. Okay, well, on the subject of children, right? Because that's a very, very important component on this. We go to a dissent from Democratic representative of Georgia and current Hillary Clinton supporter and prominent civil rights activist, John Lewis. Now, John Lewis was not for this bill. He said, quote, the bill we are considering today is a bad bill. I will vote against it, and I urge all people of conscience to vote against it. It is a bad bill because it penalizes children for the actions of their parents. This bill, Mr. Speaker, will put one million more children into poverty. How? How can any person of faith, of conscience, vote for a bill that puts a million more kids into poverty? What does it profit a great nation to conquer the world only to lose its soul? Mr. Speaker, this bill is an abdication of our responsibility and an abandonment of our morality. It is wrong. It is just plain wrong. That's John Lewis. I have a lot of respect for John Lewis. And that was a powerful speech on a piece of terrible legislation. Now, before I go on to Hillary Clinton, I want to note Kasich's response to this speech. Because you could say that it uses coded language and the language of stereotyping. Now, he said, people are not entitled to anything but opportunity. You can't be on welfare for generations. He added, this is one of those successes that when we get old and we're all in our rocking chairs, we're going to look back and say, thank God we were able to make America a little bit better. This is when you're talking about cutting people's benefits. All right. So now that's, that's John Kasich. So now I've got a Hillary Clinton who both advocated strongly for the changes. Now, during the debate, President Clinton used the story of a black mother named Lily Hardin. Now, he had met Lily Hardin during a panel on welfare reform in Arkansas. Now, he ended up listening to her story and finding it so inspiring that he touted her story from being on welfare, the old welfare program, for about two years to actually getting a job at a supermarket and then getting off welfare. He actually cited a response to a question about what she liked best about being off of welfare. Quote, when my boy goes to school and they say, what does your mama do for a living? He can now give an answer. That's great. And that's a wonderful story. It's very, very uplifting. And it's ultimately the goal of any welfare program, right? You want to give people enough so they can live off of until they can find work to pull themselves back up, right? And she did. She used a welfare program as you're supposed to. This is not an example of that generational welfare, right? This is an example of somebody who's fallen on hard times, used a program as it's supposed to be used, and then got off the program, got a job. Well, this argument, her example actually, flies in the face of the need for welfare reform. A lot of people were like this woman, Lily Harden. Used the system the way it was, was supposed to be used, and I realize that some don't, but she used it as it was supposed to be used, and she was very successful, at least in that. Now, as I said, critics of welfare, including Mrs. Clinton, actually talked about that generational uh, dependency. However, as I said, Mrs. Harden, or Miss Harden, went on to work very, very hard, as would a lot of people who are given the opportunity to do better, right? It's opportunity. You could argue the welfare, in its original form, actually helped give people more of an opportunity to find work, uh, well, to, just to find work, and to get off of that system. That's the whole point. All right. So now, uh, Clinton had invited Harding to, do, to go to the cer uh, signing ceremony of the bill. He and also cited her during his debate later on during the election uh, against Bob Dole. Quote, I want to make more people like that woman, Lily Harden. So I've got a plan to do it, and it's just the beginning. More prophetic words have not been spoken, and in this case, in an ominous way. See, the Clintons uh, went on to champion welfare reform, and Hillary was a big part of that. 
being the first lady. Now, her role consisted of being uh, of publicly advocating for passage and implementation of this welfare reform bill. In a Newsweek cover story in 1993, she actually weighed in on the upcoming debate. Now, she was asked by an interviewer, quote, how do we as a society address the 15-year-old mother on welfare? What do we owe her? Can we demand a set of behavioral standards from her? She responded, sure. I've been talking about that since 1973. You know, I am one of the first people who wrote about how rights and responsibilities had to go hand in hand. Now, he followed up by asking her, quote, when you talk about moving someone from work to work from welfare in two years, what happens to people who don't want to work? Now, that's, of course, a question uh, consisting of right-wing framing, right? Um, basically, the assumption that everybody's going to be lazy. Now, that's not exactly true, right? But it is the assumption. Um, and so these questions are definitely from that framing. Now, he asks, would you impose sanctions on those people? Well, I think most people would say yes. She says, quote, I think you have to. What happened in Arkansas is that people who refused for whatever reason to participate had their benefits cut. Now, I'm not exactly against that. If you don't want to work, then okay, I get it, right? That's way different than not being able to find work, which in this welfare reform package, it doesn't matter if you follow the rules or not. After five years, or in some places two years, that's it, end of the line. Whether or not you were able to find work or not, you're done. Now, she also wrote in a 1999 op-ed that, quote, too many of those on welfare had known nothing but dependency all their lives, and many would have found it difficult to make the transition to work on their own. And once again, this is after it passed, where she's defending herself, right? So basically, she's out there defending, cutting people's lifelines, and throwing bootstraps at them. Because if we didn't do that, if we didn't cut them off, well, then they would not know how to go out and work. It's that old right-wing uh, kind of meme, right? Where don't feed the animals, because then they'll grow dependent on handouts, and they'll never fend for themselves. This is the framing, and this is how she approached the framing back in 1999. And look, doing so and making that argument, making that case from that perspective, using that framing, was essentially the same as calling people on welfare lazy. And guess where else we hear that from? We hear that from Republicans now that want to cut food stamps. We hear the same kind of argument. She was parroting that back in 1999. Amazing. Now, you're saying that she'd never call people on welfare lazy, right? I mean, that's something that Ronald Reagan or John Kasich would do, right? Well, no. Because in a 2002 interview, she said the policy that she championed had resulted in recipients being, quote, no longer being deadbeats. Deadbeats. Now, we're going to go into the effects of this later, right, at the end of the segment. But first... I want to say that she calls herself a progressive, but one who gets things done. But I got to ask you is, do progressives call people, poor people, on welfare deadbeats? How's that framing for you, right? And my guess is no. And actually, a lot of people took issue with that stance. A lot of people who are Clinton allies. One such person was the head of the Children's Defense Fund. Um, and that's, of course, Marion Wright Edelman. Now, after the signing of the bill, Edelman wrote that, quote, President Clinton's signature on this pernicious bill makes a mockery of his pledge to not hurt children. This is the head of the Children's Defense Fund saying, how could you do this? You are punishing children for the actions of their parents. It's not their fault. Their parent might be, in, in some cases, lazy or in some cases have significant roadblocks into, be, into them being able to find work. You're going to punish children for that. As someone who's the head of the Children's Defense Fund, that ought to get you riled, and it did. And it did. Absolutely. And during an interview on Democracy Now! back in 2007, Edelman described her changed relationship with the Clintons after this reform bill. Because remember, it hurt her deeply. For someone who's de devoted most of her life 
to helping children and defending children. Seeing a bill like this that hurts children, signed by one of your friends, someone who you were uh, a mentor of, it's got to hurt deep down, right? Now she said, quote, Hillary Clinton is an old friend, but they are not friends in politics. That has hurt that relationship. But okay, you might be saying, okay, that's 2002, man. We've had 20 years now since the passage of welfare reform to look at the data, right? Now, surely she has seen the data and has evolved on this issue, right? Well, not quite. You see, she in fact defended her role during her 2008 campaign for president. She said, quote, welfare should have been a temporary way station for people who needed immediate assistance. It should not be considered an anti-poverty program. It simply did not work. So as an poverty, anti-poverty program, it didn't work. Well, you know what else didn't work? The bootstraps you threw at them. Now, ironically, one of the people who suffered from these bootstraps was a very poster child of welfare reform, Lily Harden. We go back to her. Now, uh, journalist Jason DeParo, and this is all according to The Intercept, followed up with Lily Harden nine years later and discovered that she had a stroke in 2002. However, because she was no longer on welfare, because her time limit had expired and she had found work, she was unable to get on Medicaid and could not afford her $450 monthly bill for prescription drugs. In the end, she said, quote, it didn't pay off. Quote from Lily Harden. Okay, so that was 2002, right? So, or I'm sorry, that was, yeah, that was 2002 when they asked her, so why not ask her now? Go out and ask her, okay, so you went through some hardship, right? But now you've got to be doing better, right? You've got to be doing better. Well, it turns out we can't ask her because Lily Harden died in March of 2014 at the age of 59. Now, we don't know uh, if, had she been able to get on Medicaid before, had she lived a little bit longer. We don't know. We don't know the complications from her stroke, but we do know that she was unable to get on Medicaid and get her medication which could have complications that could have led to her dying sooner than she should have. And her story is probably just one of many. And it's probably been repeated in poor urban and rural areas, you know, where African Americans and white people who live in extreme poverty have essentially had their lifelines cut, right? You've only got so long. But if there's no opportunity, there are no good jobs in that area, what are you supposed to do? It really hasn't much to you, right? So on the issue of extreme poverty, let's talk about that, right? Let's talk about the results of welfare reform. <sighs> Apparently, since, uh, since this was passed, the, there was an increase in the number of people living in extreme poverty. Now, by how much that's risen, it's kind of shocking. Now, this last fall, a pair of researchers published a book looking at the problem of extreme poverty in America. Now, extreme poverty in America is defined as living on less than $2 a day. Now, they found that 1.5 million American households, including 3 million children, are now living at or under the threshold. Now, this isn't, like, welfare reform isn't the only reason, right? There are a lot of different contributing factors to this. And that's noted in this study, right? However, in the study, the researchers wanted to point out something very particular. One year stands out, and that year is 1996, the year that welfare reform went into law. And since that, they've seen the number of people living in extreme poverty double. There's the results of welfare reform. You know what's funny is that Hillary Clinton has said, look, this isn't an anti-poverty program. It didn't work. The data says otherwise. And let's look at the two authors of this study, right? And this comes from Catherine J. Eden, a sociology professor at John Hopkins University, and Luke Schaefer, a professor of social work at the University of Michigan. They found that, quote, by 1996, welfare was putting a sizable dent in the number of families living below the $2 a day threshold. As of early 1996, the program was lifting more than a million households with children out of 
a two day, uh, two dollars a day poverty every month. Whatever else could be said for or against welfare, it provided a safety net for the poorest of the poor. In the late 1990s, as welfare reform was gradually implemented across the states, its impact in reducing two dollars a day poverty began to decline precipitously. By mid 2011, TANF, which is what replaced welfare, was lifting only about 300,000 households with children above the $2 a day mark. There's the results of welfare reform. You want to champion that? Even John Lewis was against you. But I keep hearing on Hillary Clinton, Jeff, 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 come on. She's a progressive. What are you talking about? Are you going to give us a litmus test? No, no, she's a progressive. But she's also a realist, right? That means she can get things done. Well, for one, results don't lie, neither do facts. Now, you could characterize this entire segment as an unfair attack, right? However, Hillary Clinton still defends welfare reform, and she still used the same rhetoric that Republicans use today to attack other programs like food stamps and housing vouchers. That same rhetoric that has been used to pass programs that hurt single mothers and children, often minorities. <laughs> and see, here's the thing. Hillary Clinton is touting her ability to get things done with Republicans, right? Her work with John Kasich, her work touting this welfare reform. I know she was only the first lady, but she had a very instrumental role in pushing this to the public. Her work and Bill Clinton's work with John Kasich on welfare reform is a great example of what terrible things she's willing to work with Republicans on. So when you ask what Bernie Sanders has done for the poor, well, that's not a good question because a better question would be to ask what has Hillary Clinton done for the poor, for children, for African Americans. And when you look at the, uh, when you look at what she's done, you may not like the answers. 